hypothetically speaking, if you had to choose five luxury handbags from your collection that you will keep forever no matter what, as well as five that you will sacrifice for a greater cause, which ones would they be? If you watch my channel regularly, you would know which ones are my favorite bags in my collection. But we don't often talk about the ones that we will be willing to let go or sacrifice if we had to for a greater cause, either to get the next unicorn or to raise capital for your next business venture. It does not really matter what the reason is. Hello, my name is Amy and on this channel, we're all about making the savviest decisions around luxury fashion. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So yes, I finally decided to create my first luxury tag video and I do want to tag some of my favorite ladies here on YouTube before I forget. Kat L, Gina, Clara Zila, Mel in Melbourne, Jerusha, Isabel, Karis from LV Lover CC, Oksana, and Camilla from Styling Mila. There is no right or wrong answer for your picks. It is just a hypothetical scenario. It doesn't really matter what the reasons are as long as it makes sense for you and for your collection. It doesn't have to be the most expensive. It can be a sentimental purchase. It can be just a really hard to get item. Like I said, it does not really matter. So my first handbag that I'm going to choose that I will forever, forever have in my collection is my mini square flap. This one is from the Cruise 2017 collection and it is my only square mini in my collection. If you know my collection, you would know that this is my least expensive Chanel handbag in my collection. Let's not count the SLGs, of course. And even then, I choose this one because it is so hard to get a caviar mini nowadays unless you get it in the secondhand market. It is not available in the retail store anymore. On top of that, I love a good square mini because the drop is perfect on me. I can fit everything in this bag even more comfortably than a rectangle mini. I just prefer the configuration of this, uh, the, the square versus the rectangle. And also, I've traveled and used this bag so much. Every time I travel, I try to bring at least one luxury bag with me just because I love to use my bags. And the one that makes the most sense to bring is usually the square mini because it is small, it is easy to pack, but it's also very durable. This caviar has done so well. I don't have to worry about it. Of course, it is a mini bag, but I love my mini bags and I'm really good at downsizing anyway. So this was a no-brainer. It is one that I definitely will never give up in my collection and I cannot imagine not having this in my collection. The next handbag that will always forever stay in my collection is this beautiful cocoa handle in the light gray color. This one is from the 19P collection, so the Spring Summer Act 1 from 2019. It is one of those collections where they did the shiny champagne gold hardware instead of the usual vintage age gold hardware which is so stunning with this light color it is in this beautiful matte very light gray caviar which almost looks white sometimes i have three cocoa handles in my collection and this one is my favorite chanel does not tend to repeat their colors except for black for example but even within black caviars there are different textures so every single season is slightly different so i'm pretty sure that it would be very hard to get another one like this and even though this is not my most expensive bag either, it does not matter because it's one of those most stunning and unique ones that I've ever come across and I'm just, yeah, it's just never leaving my collection for sure. This beautiful Dior bag I bought this year on my birthday month and this beautiful Mitsa, shouting out to Kat L. She gifted this to me and it was so thoughtful of her. So pretty and perfect on this beautiful Lady Dior in the mini size. This one is in the gray opalescent color. And yes, this gray opalescent is a little darker than usual, isn't it? The Lady Dior was in my wish list every single year ever since, I don't know, maybe 2016. And I've never taken the plunge and I finally did this year, which makes it super special. The Lady Dior is not a really hard to obtain handbag. I think they are always available, especially because this is a classic. As far as I know, it is still a classic in the gray opalescent, even though this shade of the gray opalescent is slightly darker than the previous year that I've seen. Honestly speaking, I probably do not need to ever buy another evening bag in my collection just because I don't really have that many evening functions to go to anyway. And if 
I do, I can easily just whip out the Lady Dior and I'm good to go. So this is not going to be a bag that I will use all the time. In fact, I still haven't used it this year because of the pandemic. But it is a handbag that I know I can count on every time I do have sort of a date night or an evening, sort of more fancy evening or wedding to go to. I can always rely on this bag. And although it is not impossible to get it again if I were to not have it anymore, it's just not a bag that I want to just keep on letting go and getting back, you know, because the prices keep on going up and I have this perfect one in the perfect shade of darker gray. Uh, just to give you a comparison between uh, the earlier one, this one almost looks white and this one is like literally the perfect shade of gray. The next handbag that I chose to keep forever and that is not going anywhere is this beautiful bucket bag from the 19B collection. Shouting out to all the ladies who have this bag as well, Jerusha, Karis, they both have this beautiful bag in different colors. And I just feel like even though this bag is also not, you know, it's not the most expensive one, it's also a seasonal bag, it's not really a classic. For me, this one is extra special because I've always loved a good bucket bag. The style itself, I just love in general, but I'm very particular in terms of how easily accessible and how user-friendly it is because at the end of the day a bucket bag is not really a bag that you wear for you know for dressing up or anything like that more of a functional practical bag a, more of an everyday bag i love the pleat here it gives it structure i love that it comes in this um you know kind of a lighter weight caviar it makes the bag very very lightweight but still very durable and even though it is a seasonal style, it does not really matter because bucket bags in general is a style that will forever be a classic. I fell in love with this particular season's bucket bag because every other one that came out after the season, I was not crazy about. Any other ones that came before this one, I was not crazy about either. So I just thought that this one was the perfect design. I love the little top handle. Fifth one or a last one, it would be another mini flap. This one is from the 18B collection. So fall winter of 2018 and this beautiful raspberry pink color. It is actually a really dark raspberry pink. As a child, I always gravitated towards red. And this shade of red is kind of like a very cool tone, very, very dark pink. So it almost looks like a red color. And depending on the lighting, it can also look a little different. Of course, I know that there are more truer red colored minis that came out in the previous years, but I really started to get back into Chanel. So my journey to getting back into Chanel, it was uh, back in 2016. So anything before that, I wouldn't have been able to get unless I got pre-loved and I'm a sucker for getting brand new. So this one came out in 2018 and I just had to have it. Uh, I also, shouting out to my good friend Amy Jo, she also, uh, we were there together, we bought this together. Combined with the fact that I'm a big, big fan of mini flops from Chanel and the fact that this one is in caviar, impossible to get, led me to choosing this one. Of course, the strap length is a bit longer than the square mini, which is my favorite configuration and style, but it's still a gorgeous one. And honestly, it does not really matter because the color, like the color is so special. So yes, this is my final choice. Basically, if I had to only choose five handbags that I will keep forever for my entire collection, these would be it. Let us get into the fun portion of this tag video. We have to choose five handbags from our entire collection that we will be willing to let go to recuperate some money for a greater cause. It does not matter what the reason is. For me, it would be to get my dream Birkin. Um, who knows when that's going to happen, but that's you know, that would be one of my goals is to uh, maybe fund a future Birkin. Anyway, if you're doing this tag, I want you to choose five handbags from your collection. And even if you don't have five plus five to choose, choose whatever, you know, X amount of bags that works for your collection. And let's just stick with handbags because it's just more fun to talk about handbags. So five handbags that I would be willing to give up. And these are not the most obvious choices. In fact, I want them to be more strategic, meaning the reason why you choose these 
are more strategic, whether it's because it's still a very popular trendy bag, so you would be able to sell it faster and recuperate money faster, or maybe they are just bags that are very highly sought after and that you would be able to get a large amount of money and that you're still willing to give up, of course. So whatever those reasons are, there's no wrong answer. And of course, it's all hypothetical because I'm not letting anything go at this moment. Okay, the first handbag that I chose that I thought was the most uh, reasonable and that makes the most sense for my collection is yet a cocoa handle. Why? So this is my black cocoa handle. Like I said earlier, I have three in my collection. And the black one is the one that I use the least. 2019 was one of my biggest years for Chanel handbags. And I kind of went a little crazy with cocoa handles in general, like the style of handbag. I think once I realized that I wanted the style and especially in the smallest size possible, so this is the mini, uh, or they call it the small now, I just, I bought one after another. Like I bought the blue, I bought the light gray, and then I had to have a black one for some reason. I was just so obsessed with the style that I just got so many in a row. And of course, now that I look back, shoulda, woulda, coulda, I probably did not need a black one also. So if I'm being really honest with myself and being really strategic and uh, logical, the first handbag that should go and that I know would recuperate good money because it is a very sought after style and black is just, you can never go wrong with black. They are more expensive now and the quality is not as good as before. So all these reasons led me to believe that it would make sense to let this go. Uh, so not only is it going to a much better home that will actually get used, but I know that it will probably go pretty fast as well. So yeah, the one that I would sacrifice, the first one that I would sacrifice would be this beautiful black cocoa handle that I got from the 19A collection. So from the Métier d'Art collection in 2019. The next bag that I picked is probably a shocker for most of you. In fact, I want you guys to guess which one I'm letting go. And yes, it is a Chanel, so little hint there. Um, yeah, are you ready? <laughs> yes, it's a mini and it's a mini flap in the beautiful seasonal houndstooth tweed in black and white and beige fabric with a Coco Chanel ribbon running across it. If you look very carefully, there's a ribbon running across the whole weaving of the fabric. It's so stunning. This one is from the 20P collection. So spring, summer, 2020, fairly recent, never used. It's more of a collector's piece for me anyway. And it's not like I don't have enough mini flaps to rotate anyway. I have the red one that I'm keeping forever. I have the black one that I'm keeping forever. And so if I'm being a very strategic here and I know that it's for a greater cause, I will actually let this go. This, the cocoa handle, and I'm already kind of two thirds of the way uh, of my dream Birkin, for example. Let's switch it up a little bit and go with a non-Chanel handbag for once. So my next pick, uh, the next bag that I would be willing to sacrifice hypothetically would be a Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 Bandoulière. I know this bag is so, so special in my collection in a way because not only is my patina perfect, like there's literally no flaw at all. It's the fact that I got this bag in Spain, in Europe, um, and the fact that it's still made in France, like this particular one is still made in France, which is so difficult, if not impossible to get here in North America, makes it extra special. However, if I'm being really honest with myself again, I don't use the Speedy B. I don't use the Speedy in general. It's just not a style that works for me. I love the look of it and I love a good monogram and Vachetta bag but I just get annoyed at getting in and out of it. It's not so much that it's hard, but I do get annoyed by it. And zippers and me don't work very well in general. So again, if I'm being very honest with my collection and just being very strategic here, because I know that a Speedy B is still very sought after and the fact that it's made in France is impossible to get here, I would sell it. And the Speedies, 
like any LV bag and or actually any luxury bags nowadays have gone up in price so much that I know I would be able to recuperate my money for it especially because mine is in perfect condition beautiful medium uh, light patina this tag is extra it does not come with it this tag is extra special I got it heat stamped in Singapore with the Mer Lion on it and I have one of these beautiful clips from Organize My Bag that makes it drape perfectly. Okay, another Chanel bag that I will sacrifice would be a Chanel Classic flap. Well, actually, mine is a seasonal flap because this is the Jumbo Single flap. This is my only Chanel bag that I have pre-loved. And when I got it uh, in 2016, it was in excellent use condition. Sort of nothing really to complain about it. The structure, everything was perfect, no smell. And it is in this really versatile uh, silver hardware, which makes it easier to dress because it's such a large size. For me, it's like a maxi size on my body frame. But the reason why I decided that if I were to let go of another bag, it would be this because the size is a little large on my body frame. Like I said earlier, I know that large bags are going to be coming back full force in trend again. It always will recycle between small, mini, large, whatever, you know, fashion works that way. But for me, if I'm being very honest with how much I use this bag, it's not very often. And although I love having it, and of course, like I said, I'm not really selling anything, but although I would love to have it in my collection anyway, I know that I would be willing to sacrifice this for a greater cause. At the end of the day, it is still a classic flap, so it's still very sought after. And the jumbo size in a single flap is not very easy to come by in such a great condition. I would much prefer a medium if I were to get another classic flap, for example. And the fact that it's probably going to be quite easy to sell because at the end of the day, it's still a classic. I think my last pick will be another shocker. And the bag that I chose... <laughs> yes, it's the Louis Vuitton Multi Pochette Accessoire and I have it in the khaki color. You guys might be wondering, Amy, what are you doing? You said that this is your favorite pandemic bag and it is, trust me, it is. But I know that this is still a very trendy bag at the moment, at the time of filming this video. So I know for a fact that it will probably sell really quickly. I do have the Twice as well, which I can use as my pandemic bag. So I didn't really need this per se, but I love the trendy factor, which is the reason why I bought it. But if I had to let something go that I know that I can recuperate money quickly, I would let it go just because it's the great timing to do it. In reality, if I really needed money, I would let go of much more than just these five bags. I would probably have to let go of, I don't know, maybe my Valentino bags, my Fendi bags, like all those things that uh, will add to funding whatever I needed the money for. Well, let me know what you thought about my choices. Did you think that it made sense? Or do you think that I'm crazy to let go of, say, my houndstooth mini? Like, Amy, what are you doing? Let me know what you think. Of course, like I said, this is all in the fun, all hypothetical. This is my first tag video, my first luxury tag video. And I hope that if you're a YouTuber, that you join in the fun as well. And I hope that the 10 or 11 ladies that I tag, that you guys also do it. I would be so curious to know because you guys have such a great variety and beautiful collection. It would be so interesting to know what you guys would pick and what your reasoning behind it would be. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel and you love this kind of content, I would love to have you back. So please don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!